Hi, this is Dan, otherwise known as God is my judge. I just wanted to uh, respond to Paul at Triblog. Uh, first, I wanted to just recap my, my argument and then uh, provide a little bit of background about what's been going on and then provide uh, Paul's latest response and then comment on that. Um, so basically, I've been arguing that choose is incompatible with determinism, and because the Bible uses the word choose, we've got to get rid of determinism. Now, uh, Paul and Steve Hayes and myself have been kind of debating this issue for, for months at this point. Um, but Paul basically has taken the approach of providing uh, a definition by uh, philosopher Robert Kane um, that he's, uh, he's been defending. And uh, he's, he's showing, well, this definition can be reconciled with determinism. And I've been basically saying, well, that's fine and helpful for philosophical discussions, but uh, you can't really use that definition on scripture. Um, in Paul's latest response, he actually provided a number of uh, dictionary definitions uh, that he believes are compatible with de determinism. Um, although he provided a bunch of dictionary definitions, uh, I can actually um, group them into three different buckets. Um, the first uh, bucket of definitions I'd call a thesaurus type approach, and this is something that Steve Hayes and I actually have uh, debated before. But the basic picture is defining choose as pick, decide, select, elect, prefer, uh, some, something like that. And the issue that I have with that is uh, it's a tautology. Um, if you look up choose, uh, you'll find the definition as pick. But you go look up pick, you'll find it's choose. Well, you really haven't learned anything about what choose is like. And Steve actually explained this, and I thought he explained it very well. Um, he said basically dictionaries kind of assume, uh, especially in cases like this, they assume a deeper level of understanding of the language. You understand the context. So um, you're, not, you're not really reliant just on that definition to understand the concept of, uh, of choose. Um, and so in, in that case, what ends up happening is these uh, um, thesaurus type approaches really end up uh, dependent on more detailed definitions. Now, uh, Paul did provide two other uh, more detailed definitions. So let's go ahead and get into that. First was provided by um, Webster, and Webster basically says that, that uh, or Webster basically defines choice as to select freely after consideration. And then the second one was um, to select out of a greater number of things, and that was provided in the Oxford American Dictionary as well as a couple others. It looks like it was in uh, four different dictionaries, uh, something like that. So once again, we have to select freely after consideration or to select out of a greater number of things. Okay, so this kind of moves the discussion along. Um, and it moves the, the discussion to the question of, well, do these dic dictionary definitions square with determinism or, or not? Um, they look pretty good, but, you know, you know, can you really take them out of the, the, the garage? Well, Paul doesn't provide any arguments as to why these definitions um, reconcile with, uh, with determinism. Um, and so, so from that standpoint, there's really not much to, uh, to engage on. Um, but uh, I can provide an ex a counterexample where... Uh, a way that people have used compatibilism doesn't square. Let's take, for example, Jonathan Edwards' notion of, uh, of freedom. Uh, Jonathan Edwards said, um, you're free if, uh, on the hypothesis, or you suppose that you choose something, if you actually uh, can do it. So let's say, for example, um, I choose to eat an apple, and if my body is actually free, and I pick up the apple, and I bite into the apple, and I'm eating the apple, um, that works, but if someone grabs the apple out of my hand, then I wasn't free. Okay, well that's a freedom of the body. It's not really a freedom of choice. It's a freedom to execute the choice. So now if you take Webster's de definition, um, you, you know, to select freely after consideration, the freely is describing select. It's not f describing the execution of the selection, the body's execution of the selection. So you form an intention, and then you do what you intended to do, um, and the freedom, in Edward's case, attaches to doing what you intended to do. Um, but in Merriam-Webster's case, it's uh, the freedom is describing the selection itself. So um, basically, Edwards is talking about a freedom of the body, and uh, Webster is talking about freedom of choice. And so that's one way in which determinists have tried to reconcile these types of definitions with uh, determinism. And another, the other uh, definition of select have a greater number of things. The issue there is that you've got things in plural. That's the object of choice. You're choosing between multiple things. You can uh, pick up an apple or a pear or something like that. There's more than one. Um, 
and uh, I say that it's an issue because as soon as you can you say that you can choose that choosing is a faculty of the person that the person is able to choose you're right back to the issue of multiple possibilities now the other definitions that I had provided um, which included the words alternatives or possibilities or possible alternatives or something like that are more explicit they're more clear this one is more implicit but as soon as you uh, say that choosing is an ability that person has or a person is able to choose you end up right back with the same problem now once again compatibilists will try to um, usurp these definitions they'll try to put determinism in the mouth of the common man um, but uh, their approaches are um, seem to be loaded with equivocation and just uh, verbal smog and, st and stuff like that but long story short uh, the issue is how successful they are in uh, appropriating these definitions or not um, and that's the that's the real challenge so for Paul to kind of you know claim victory because he's provided these definitions well no no this is actually the starting point it's not the it's, it's not the end now because uh, attempts to appropriate these definitions have been so unsuccessful um, semi-compatibilists have actually diverged from compatibilists and the big difference and the best way to illustrate this is the very different approaches that Paul and Steve have taken um, if you take Steve's basic approach and the way he's responded to my arguments he's kind of basically said well the dictionary definitions are basically fine um, you, you, you know but they can square with determinism and he agrees with me that you shouldn't really use philosophical definitions and twist uh, and, and basically uh, interpret scripture with philosophical definitions Paul has taken the exact opposite approach the dictionary defines a definitions that I provided that say that we choose between alternatives or possibilities or possible alternatives um, he's rejected and he's been pushing and advocating this uh, f philosophical definition so long story short um, they, they've taken very different approaches and that's uh, related to the fact that Steve is compatibilist and Paul is, uh, has taken a semi-compatibilist approach now the difference between compatibilists and semi-compatibilists are uh, compatibilists say that freedom and determinism are consistent. Semi-compatibilists say no they're not but freedom and responsibility is consistent. So the difference is between freedom and responsibility and, and that's and that's kind of the core issue and so the reason why uh, Steve was so quick to try to appropriate the uh, the normal notions and dictionary definitions of choice and put uh, determinism in the mouth of the common man um, was because he he really needed to because his his notion was kind of expanded in that he thought that freedom and responsibility freedom and determinism uh, are completely compatible notions um, the the big driving uh, issue uh, in this difference is the consequence argument um, but basically semi-compatibilists look at the consequence argument and basically say okay at the core freedom and determinism are I irreconcilable notions there's there's something fundamentally wrong about it so they do look at um, these types of uh, um, hypothetical ways of describing freedom of describing abilities and possibilities that, uh, that Stephen and I have been debating uh, as a uh, fundamentally um, wrong-headed and that's why they haven't taken this approach so I say that all all that to say basically um, the way I look at Paul's argument here is hitting the reset button hitting the do-over even though we've been going at this for uh, for months now um, he's basically what has he has he scrapped all his prior arguments and now uh, he's starting over with with new ones? Um, it it seems like that's the case. Now Paul did provide some strings back into his original argument by saying that basically these dictionary definitions were similar to Cain's, but Cain himself provided many qualifications in the sense of the choose that he was using. I urge anyone to look at my post on uh, July 1st and look at my arguments why Cain's definition was philosophical, which Paul did not address. Okay, that's all I had to say. God be with you.